Last year I started a series of videos about Liverpool docks and the overhead railway and I started here in the south the site of the Herculaneum dock and I worked my way north I only actually managed to make three videos and um, the target then was five I got to um, the Albert dock the Albert dock and the Salt House dock featured in the last video and my intention then was to carry on um, towards the north terminus of the old overhead railway but for one reason and another they never got made so this is going to be part four of the Liverpool docks and the overhead railway but unfortunately it's going to be cut short because at the time of filming I couldn't get access onto um, Liverpool waterfront because there were some gigs being set up there. When I started making this series of videos, I think it was March 2023, I had no intention of it running into a second year. And if you're interested in the contents of this particular series, uh, I suppose you feel the same. So many, many apologies for being absolutely crap at making videos. This is where it all began, the most southerly of the dock network, the Herculaneum. And this is the Herculaneum steps that we're heading towards. I started making these videos because I had an interest in this particular one at the Dingle End and uh, also an interest in the overhead railway because before my dad married my mum he lived in the Dingle and he worked in Bootle so the overhead railway would have been his transport to work and home on a daily basis these are the Herculaneum steps also known as the Dockers steps and this is one of the graving docks which was part of the Herculaneum network. This is part four and we're going to start off at the canning dock. But first of all we've got to get there and I'm going to video part of the journey by car. This is what it used to look like by the way back in the day when the docks were busy and um, we're going to head towards the city centre. It's hard to imagine now what this area would have looked like when it was a busy dock. I don't think this part of the road actually existed because we're going to drive across part of the Herculaneum dock which has been filled in. And just after this roundabout on the right hand side is where the overhead railway to, would have taken a turn to go through the extension tunnel that was built. And this is some old footage of the train. So as we drive along this stretch of road now, it's really hard to imagine what it was like back when these were working docks because it's so peaceful and quiet really compared to what it would have been back then. There would have been people everywhere loading and unloading boats and ships, taking the goods to warehouses and from warehouses back to ships to set sail to other destinations. Anyway, let's head off towards Canning Dock. Lovely sky, don't you think? This is where we left off last time. This is the Salt House Dock. These days, it's a um, haven for barges which come in here from the Leeds or Liverpool Canal.
So this is where we start our journey today. This is the Canning Dock and it was opened in 1737. It was known then as the Dry Dock and it protected the tidal basin, providing an entrance into the Old Dock. In 1832 it was officially named Canning Dock. Canning Dock would have initially served ships which were involved in the transatlantic slave trade. Now this is the Brockle Bank which was built in 1964 and went into service in 1965 and served as a tug mainly in Liverpool but also in some other places as well. Brockle Bank is now owned by the Merseyside Maritime Museum. So the Canning Dock which we're looking at now and the Canning Half Tide Dock which we'll come to in a moment are named after George Canning. So George Canning was born on the 11th of April 1770 and he died on the 8th of August 1827. He was a British Tory statesman and they held various senior cabinet positions under numerous Prime Ministers including two important terms as Foreign Secretary. He finally became British Prime Minister himself and he was Prime Minister until the day he died. His tenure though only lasted 119 days. There are a couple of places named after Canning. Canning Place where the bus station is near the Hilton which runs into Hanover Street and also there's um, Canning Street in the Georgian Quarter which runs from the end of Upper Duke Street up to Grove Street where um, Faulkner Gardens is, Faulkner Square. I'm sure there's other places I've missed. There's um, a back Canning Street as well. I'm sure you can think of some others. This is the Piermaster's house and it was built in 1852 for the Piermaster and his family. He was responsible for ensuring the safe passage of ships entering and leaving the dock at high tide. This was one of four houses, but this is the only remaining one due to bombing during World War II. In 2003, it was transformed back into a wartime house and uh, you can have a walk around it if you uh, ask nicely. So this is Canning Half Tide Dock and it gives entrance to Canning Dock from the River Mersey here. These padlocks are known as love locks and they are a symbol of everlasting love, a sign of an unbreakable bond. Next we have a look at the statue of Billy Fury. Ronald Witcherly was an English musician, an early rock star and uh, he spent 332 weeks in the UK singles chart. He was born on the 17th of April 1940 in the Dingle and he died 28th of January 1983 at the age of 42. Razzle Dazzle Ferry there, don't know if you can see it in the distance. Anyway, having a look at uh, Canning's Half Tide Dock. And this was built in 1842 and opened in 1844. The half-tide dock was built by Jesse Hartley. And this is a gentleman's shelter, also built by Jesse Hartley. We're going to have a look at a statue which is known as Waiting. And it's the monument to the Liverpool Working Horses. And it was unveiled on the 1st of May 2010. For more than 250 years, horses were used to move goods to and from Liverpool docks and businesses. And at the peak, more than 20,000 horses worked on the streets of Liverpool. And that's more than any other city apart from London. This life-size monument was created by Judy Boyt. Paid for by nearly 13 years of fundraising by the Liverpool Carters Association. 
This is a propeller from the RMS Lusitania and it was fitted in 1909 to make the ship go faster. It was launched on the 7th of June 1906. The ship was torpedoed by a German U-boat SMU-20 on the 7th of May 1915. It sank just off the old head of Kinsdale in Ireland, killing 1,197 passengers, crew and stowaways. The Lusitania was owned by the Cunard Line. This is one of two canning graving docks and a graving dock simply means cleaning. So the ship would sail into the graving dock, water would be let out, the ship is propped up so it doesn't fall over by wooden beams and it, they have their hulls cleaned mainly of barnacles and any damages repaired. But the graving docks made a lot of money. There were always ships in here being repaired and being cleaned back in the day. It was a huge source of revenue for the docks. Apparently these two docks are the oldest visible remains of Liverpool's working docks. And in this one we have a ship which is called the Edmund Gardner and it was a Liverpool pilot cutter number two and uh, it dates from 1953. So the job of a pilot ship is um, basically to get ships and their crew and its cargo safely into a port and uh, out again, I think. The Edmund Gardner was in service for around 30 years and um, it's being restored, I think, at some point you can take a look around it. It's part of the uh, the museum here. Actually, I don't think it's open to the public yet. You can just view it from the outside like we are now. But at some point it's going to be opened up and you'll be able to board it and take a look around. This area featured in a TV series called Landscape Artist of the Year. And uh, some of them painted this uh, Great Western Railway building and it was described at the time as a uh, station and it's not, it's actually just a warehouse for goods trains. All these steps here would have been used for wooden props to keep the ships and boats upright while they were being cleaned. Our next trip is inside the museum of Liverpool. Not to be confused with Liverpool Museum which is on William Brown Street. This is a museum of all things Liverpool and we're going to have a look at a locomotive called Lion. Lion worked on the Liverpool Manchester Railway and there was a sister train as well which was called Tiger not quite sure what happened to Tiger, probably destroyed and disappeared. But this is Lion, and um, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to a video which discusses its restoration and um, transport into the museum. But if you remember a Ealing comedy film called the Titfield Thunderbolt, then Lion was the star of that film. It really is very, very dark in here. Even, um, even without a camera, it's difficult to see things. But this is a photograph of Lion, as she was, and the restoration, uh, partly taking place in Newton the Willows, I think, at the um, Vulcan Works. And a photograph of her as she was, and an advert or two for the film Titfield Thunderbolt. Next, we're going to take a look at one of the carriages from the Overhead Railway. 
uh, the only survivor and this is actually a restored carriage a lot of people think that this is a replica and it's not it's actually a real carriage which has been restored and it sits at the height that the overhead railway would have been when it was working so if you stand where Lion is and look up you get an idea of the height of the overhead railway and again I'll put a link in the description of a video about how this um, carriage actually got here to the museum a little bit about its restoration now I believe the majority of time when these carriages were running they would have run as a three a carriage at the front a carriage at the back and a central one They didn't actually turn around at the terminus, the back one would become the front one, front one would become the back one. Right, that's it for now. Uh, I can't go any further because the rest of this area is blocked off because Deke and Blue are playing a gig. So thank you very much for watching, we'll catch up soon.